Hello everybody and welcome back to the Prophetic RN. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be discussing mental health and just going to touch a little bit on what that looks like and based, more than anything we're going to talk about the stigma that's attached to it. Um, a lot of people it's one of the I always tell people this, mental health illness is no different than a physical illness, than a physical health illness. And it should not be something that people should be ashamed of. It's not something that people should um, make people feel bad about, um, discourage them about, integrate them about, um, just make them feel ashamed about having any form of mental illness. Um, I had to learn that. I had to learn that not towards other people, but it being done to me. Um, I had to know that, um, like I said in my welcome video, or maybe I didn't, <laughs> um, but you know, there's been so many diagnoses that's been attached to me. And I would go to counseling or whatever, and anytime they would say something or that I didn't agree with, I, I didn't go back. Okay, so this was, you know, from my teenage years on up. And I heard things, and I'm like, that's not me. And, and then it's because, and I'm gonna be honest, like it had a lot to do with my home environment, it had a lot to do with um, just not being, not wanting to be. interrogated not wanting to be targeted not wanting to be you know because there was no and I feel like I don't I can't speak for you know other races but in the black community oh wow do we have such a stigma that is attached to mental health okay we make people feel like they are absolutely crazy we make people feel like Oh, ain't nothing wrong with you. You know, you have that passiveness. You have some parents who was like, oh, that's just how they are. They make it a norm, not really um, getting that child help or any type of assistance. Working as a mental health nurse, working as a director, whatever, you, I could not tell you how many times I've heard parents say, I don't know what happened. Just all of a sudden, he just stopped responding or all of a sudden, it's like she just lost it. And then when you start going through the assessment process, you, they start to open up a little more and they're telling you, well, you know, he's always doing this and never could keep still and always talking and rambling and this and that. And then when it's left untreated or undiagnosed, it turns into full blown psychosis or something you know of that nature and then it's a process to bring them back when it could have been dealt with either through medication and therapy or just therapy or whatever was needed for that particular person but we don't seek help because there's so much negativity attached to anybody that suffers mental health issues, okay? I can only speak from experience. You all are gonna learn a lot about my story. Um, on here, I am one of those children that dealt with a lot growing up, a lot of adult issues no child should have to deal with. I would think that my um, situation was probably more unique than most um because I did I live I grew up in a two-parent home <laughs> so it wasn't the we didn't have parents or anything like that it's just our struggle was a different type of struggle and it affected my mental health tremendously uh like I said I've had a lot of diagnosis attached to me not and this is only starting from basically age 18 and up when I'm old enough to do things on my own. So growing up, now that I look back, 
I can see where I suffered from a lot because I know what it looks like now, but I just didn't know back then. Honestly, the Holy Spirit just reminded me of my first anxiety attack and it had to happen somewhere between 12 and 14 or something like that. And I'm like, wow, Lord, I forgot about that. And so, you know, in my house, it was no, it wasn't no bed of roses. Okay. There was five of us that grew up together. And then later on, we had a younger sister come along. And then we had a brother too that lived with his mom in another, in another household out of town. But in, in, in us five children growing up together, me being, my, I had a brother younger than me. And then, um, then there was me and then there was two boys and a girl older than me. So I just, I, I, I endured a lot, a lot of mental, um, abuse in the sense, um, you know, so anything that I, in you know, <laughs> anything that I endured, I guess it was just kind of like stacking and, and piling it on. Um, and like I said, it just brought on more and more, um, issues. And I wasn't very vocal about what I was going through. I, I didn't grow up in that kind of house. <laughs> I didn't grow up in the kind of household that I could go talk to my mom. I didn't grow up in the kind of household that I could go talk to my dad. So I suffered. I suffered through it all alone, except of course, God was with me the whole time. And he has shown me that. And it's amazing how I was able to get through anxiety and panic attacks all because I was a reader, all because I would pick up books and start reading and I was able to find out what was wrong with me. And I would read all kinds of stuff. And I remember finding this women's encyclopedia on health problems and I came across anxiety and I'm like, that sounds just like me. So I started doing research and, and do it to help myself get better because I had nobody. And at the age of 17, I attempted suicide, a real live true suicide. It landed me in the hospital. It landed me um, in a psychiatric facility for just a little bit. And, you know, it taught me <laughs> A lot um, it made me afraid of myself I went through a lot but I never had anybody to share it with I never had anybody to even ask me why I'm still waiting honey that was 30 years ago <laughs> and I'm just still waiting for somebody to say why did you do that or I'm waiting for somebody to say are you okay or something to acknowledge that Something was wrong with me, but nobody ever did. And I literally suffered with the shame. And then once I got back home from this mental facility, then I was labeled as crazy. So my siblings would always refer to me as being crazy. And I had that to deal with. So, you know, there's a lot of stigma that comes with mental health issues. But I'm going to tell you what God said to me. What do you have to be ashamed of? Nothing nothing and on this channel i'm going to help you grow and accept and pray through prayer and fasting and how i have overcome all of those diagnoses and the stigmas and 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 the humiliation and the degradation that came with you know cracking under pressure that probably most adults couldn't have made it through so in all of this, you're going to get bits and pieces of my story and how God just helped me make it through, how he helped me. He put certain people in my path and he just really helped me get through some of the most difficult times in my life. Can you imagine being a child? And... Your heart is racing and you feel like you can't breathe. You're, you're alive, but you feel like you're about to die. And 
you don't even feel like you can go tell your own mama. Because physically, I couldn't explain it. So, and I was, believe it or not, the most least believable child for whatever reason. And what I mean by that is they never believed me. Although, y'all, I can promise you I wasn't a liar. I wasn't um, the one to make things up. I, that wasn't me. But everybody was always believed over me. Like my siblings could lie on me and I'd get in trouble every time. It didn't matter which one it was. <laughs> and it, so I can't say that it was a favorite. I just feel like maybe somehow I was the least favorite or either I was the least I don't know. Maybe maybe I wasn't convincing enough. Maybe I don't know. I, I I don't know. And I'll probably never know, but it is neither here nor there. But I suffered a lot um through all of my mental health struggles, depression. I mean, literally y'all, I was a 12-year-old 7th grader and I was severely depressed. I would just go to school because I knew I had to go, but I never touched a piece of paper. I never touched a pencil. I never opened a book and nobody ever asked me why. I literally failed everything and nobody asked me why. I was dying inside and nobody ever asked me why. <laughs> so I know what it's like to get through um, depression, anxiety, Oh man, PTSD, we'll get on that another day. Cause like I said, um, my childhood was very traumatic, but I'm here to tell you that we are going to dissect diagnosis and we're going to break down how it feels. And my whole point, and I think God is using me to let you know that you're not alone, that there are people in the Bible that suffered with mental health. I mean, do you even read Psalms? Clearly David was depressed and he was struggling with a lot. Okay. So this is nothing new. This is nothing new. People, they called them demon possessed in the Bible. And that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it also mimics psychosis. I mean, so, and God is also, speaking to me a lot about warfare and generational curses and how a lot of us are going through what we're going through because it comes from our bloodline. It comes from our ancestors. We'll talk about diabetes being hereditary. We'll talk about uh, high blood pressure being hereditary. We'll talk about cancer. We'll try to find treatments and, and preventative measures, but nobody talks about Nobody talks about how mental health diagnosis, how psychosis and psychiatric disorders and how schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, how all of these things are generationally tied. And we are going to bind the natural with the spiritual on this channel because I have seen psychotic breaks and I knew absolutely it was warfare. I have prayed for patients because I knew they were being attacked. So we're going to dive into some things and I will at some point, whenever God leads me to, to share my story on the day of what that looked like when I tried to take my life. And I've said this before, I think it was on YouTube uh, not YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook Live, that I can absolutely see now that there was a whole spirit that took over me. A whole spirit that took over me that day. And it was not a good one. Um, but I made it. I made it by the grace of God. God was with me. Even the doctor came and sat on my bed and said, there has to be an angel with you. Like, there's no way you're, you're sitting here like you never even lost consciousness. Like, y'all, y'all just, this is, I'm praying that on this channel that it will, if it just helps one person, oh God, if it just helps one person, 
know that they're not alone and that you're not crazy. Mental health struggles are real. Rejection, degradation, people making you feel like you're not significant, it's real. And I'm here to share all of that with you. And like I said in my welcome, I don't I didn't know how I would be with all of this with sharing my story, but I know there's purpose to it. And I know God wouldn't have me to open up and put myself out there like this if it was not to help his people. And so I am just here to tell you there is hope, honey, as long as there is a God in heaven, there's hope. And let me tell you something. My prayer is that one day you all can look back over your life and think about everything that you went through, how the enemy used the people that love you the most, that's supposed to have loved you the most, how he used them to try to destroy you. Oh, but God, cause see, I'm to the point where I don't blame my family cause I know how the enemy works and see, he tried to destroy me from birth with a health diagnosis that I spent the first few years of my life back and forth to doctors and all this kind of stuff. Baby, I done been through some stuff. Oh, but God. Oh, but God. So, don't be ashamed. Don't let anybody make you feel like you are not. What you're feeling, what you're experiencing is not real. When you wake up and you can't breathe, when you feel like, if you just take another step, that's going to be the end of your life. When you feel like you're breathing, but your breath's not coming all the way through. When your heart is pounding so fast and so hard, it's like it's about to come out your chest. When you just feel like you're just covered in doom. When you feel like your body is shutting down on you and you're dying inside and nobody know it but you. Been there. And you have nothing to be ashamed of. And on this channel, we're going to unpack all of that. I will give you what thus says the Lord. And like I said uh, before, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one coachings as well. From children to adolescents to adults, older, younger, it doesn't matter. We all suffer with things. And this thing called life <laughs> is hard. So, um, I will be back with another video, but I just came here to tell you, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. God is with you. He is with you in this and he loves you. And I know it seems like the world is attacking you. And I know it seems like nobody hears you and nobody understands but God is with you. He told me he is with his children. Don't ever think you're by yourself. We're also going to touch on substance abuse and how it relates more to mental health disorders than pleasure. And a lot of people think, oh, that person used drugs because, you know, they like to get high. No, they use drugs because they are trying to survive. They use drugs because they want to silence the voices. They use drugs because they're trying to numb themselves to the pain because nobody would hear them. Nobody understood. They didn't have anybody to talk to. I done been there. And that's why I say, by the grace of God, I never touched a drug. By the grace of God, I am here. I am here. And I have been set free from every diagnosis they tried to attach to me all by the grace of God and if he can do it for me he is no respecter of person he will do the same for you I love y'all so much and I know in my heart <laughs> God absolutely loves you because he tore me down to build me up to strengthen me to help you <laughs> if that ain't love that he could take a sinner like me 
and say, daughter, I'm going to use you. And here I am. So in any way that I can help, I'm going to do that. If you have any questions about any type of mental health disorders, I have resources. I'm a, like I said, I read as a kid and helped diagnose myself. <laughs> so I'm still that way today. So I just want to say, you guys, I love you. I pray that this channel is beneficial. I plead the blood of Jesus over it. Nobody will be bullied. Nobody will be made fun of. Don't ever be ashamed to share your story, okay? And I love you guys, and I will be back with the next set of messages that God has for me to release, and there's a lot. <laughs> um, there's some into, in a, uh, individual prophetic words, too, for some people, um, but... Y'all just kind of work with me because I'm new to this. So I love you guys. I will see you guys on the next episode from the Prophetic RN, all things mental health and all things thus says the Lord. I love you. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.